Welcome to the Chop Man tutorial series. Based on the beloved classic arcade game Pac-Man, this project was created to be an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide that would give you the tools, techniques, and experience of creating a full game from start to finish. We have made all the original assets that we created for the game completely free. Links in the description below. For this project, if you wish to follow along step by step, you will need to first download the Chopman project files, both of which can be downloaded in the downloads area of the tutorial site or from links in the description. With both our player and enemy spawning and respawning system complete, the next thing we need to do is calculate and reflect the amount of lives the player has in the UI. To begin, let's go to our UI lives object. Since our life object is set in a layout, Unity will automatically set and arrange our new life UI objects. So let's first create a prefab from our UI life element. With the prefab created, we can delete our life UI object in our scene. Next, let's create a scene variable for our UI life layout object as well as our lives object UI prefab. And let's drag each object from our scene into its variable value. With the variables created, let's go into our game manager state machine and let's go into our start state. So before we begin, let's talk through the logic that we want to put in place. At the beginning of our game or our level, we want our game to instantiate our live UI prefab for each life that the player has. So for example, if the player has three lives to then create three live UI elements. That said, let's begin by creating another scene variable, which we'll call lives UI list. Our lives UI list variable will essentially keep track of our lives UI spawn objects. So for our variable type, we're going to use a list game object type. Since we want this to happen at the beginning of our game, we'll start the state with a start event. Next, we'll use a for loop node. For those unfamiliar with loops in programming or code, a loop is a programming structure that repeats a sequence of instructions until a specific condition is met. In the instance of a for loop, for our purposes at least, this loop is defined by the start and end number that we set in our node. The body refers to the functionality that it will be doing in each loop. And the exit refers to the next node that it will go to once the loop is complete. For the first, we'll leave that zero. And for the last, Let's get our application variable players lives left and connect that into the last input section. For our body, we want to use a game object instantiate on parent node. And the parent that we want to instantiate to is our lives level layout UI object variable. And the object we want to instantiate is our lives UI prefab. Once our object is instantiated, we want to use a list add item node and we want to add that to our lives UI list variable. With our spawn life UI count complete, Let's test out that functionality before we continue on creating the remainder of our code. To test it out properly, let's go into our application variables and let's set our lives left to three. At the start of our game, we not only have three UI objects, but also if we go in our scene variables, we can see in our game object list, we also have our three UI objects. The 
With our life count UI display working, let's copy our code and use that to create the display when the player loses a life. And we're gonna go into our player was killed and inside of our subtract life state. And let's paste our nodes. And let's remove our start. So the functionality we wanna create in this state is we want it to not only subtract the player's life, but we also want it to remove it from our list and our scene. So in order to do this, we're gonna first remove all the items from our list and then use our for loop to redisplay our new life amount. So let's first duplicate our for loop and our player lives left variable. And let's connect that to our on enter state. And inside our body, we want to destroy the game objects from our list. So to do this, we'll use a get list item node. And for our index, we're going to use the index from our loop. Now on our exit, we're going to use a list clear node. Well, instead of the AOT list clear, we want a list clear from our collection list. And from there, we want it to subtract our player live left. And with our new life count, we then want it to go and we want it to re repopulate our list. Something to keep in mind when working with loops is when working with loops, Unity will cease functioning if the loop goes on for an infinite amount, which depending on the last time you save, it can easily cost us hours worth of work. The reason for that being is Unity will no longer respond until that loop is broken. For example, if we were to preview our game the way it is now, it would result in an endless loop. Before we test out our state, we need to add one more thing, which is going to be a branch node, and we're going to add that in between our lives left and the logic that respawns our display life. And in this node, we want to check and see if the amount of lives left is greater than zero. If it is in fact greater than zero, we can continue on with our logic to display our player lives. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.